Hello class, this is section 2.3 and in this video we are going to discuss the separation of variables technique. So as a recap, we have this situation again. We have an iron rod, one dimensional, and this time we have a prescribed temperature of zero Celsius on both ends. So the left end of the rod has always have has temperature zero and the right end of the rod always has temperature zero. These are determined by these two conditions over here. So we know that for all time that the temperature is zero at the ends. We also want to prescribe a starting temperature. So at the start of the experiment, we know exactly what the temperature is at every point of the rod. And of course, um, heat flows in the rod according to the heat equation, which is given by this. And we want to try to solve this problem. So this is hard. So before we proceed, let us start by assuming we start with an idea. Assume that the solution uxt can be written down as uxt equals fx times gt. So in other words, we assume that we can separate out the x variable and t variable in our solution. Now I want to clarify, there is no reason to assume that this is true. I mean, that's, our solution can, be, can take whatever form it wants to. But just to make our life easier, we're just going to try to assume that we have this kind of solution. And this is called a product solution. Right, so we, this is just an assumption we make to try to make our problem a bit easier. So again, the solution, the correct solution to this problem doesn't necessarily have to be a product solution. We're just going to try to make our life a bit easier here by making this assumption. So why do we do this? So um, first of all, we should clarify that fx, fx is constant in C fx doesn't change with respect to time and gt is constant in x so gt doesn't change with respect to space so we have two parts of the problem of the, of the of the solution that are independent of each other so let's see what happens when we plug it in so we plug in to our original problem so we have it here and what we get is partial u partial t is equal to fx partial g partial t and of course um, the second derivative that's on this side is going to be gt times the second derivative of x so please note that because fx is a constant in t, we can just pull out, pull it out of the derivative. And because gt is constant in x, we can just pull it out of the second derivative. Oops, sorry, this should be partial ft, partial x squared. All right, so now plugging in our heat equation, we get fx partial g partial t, t, minus k times gt partial fx partial x squared equals zero. So we want, to, our goal is to move all the t's to the left and all the x's to the right. This is similar to something we did in uh, ODEs. So let's just first um, rewrite the equation this way. So we have two terms, one on the left side and one on the right side. So we move all the x terms, all the x terms to the right and all the t terms to the left. No, sorry, I mean the other way around. We move all the t terms to the left and x terms to the right. So we have 1 over k g t times partial g t partial t is equal to 
1 over fx partial squared fx partial x squared. So we rewrite the equation this way. Now you may ask why is it so important that the equation is written down this way. Here is an important principle for us. The principle says that if we have a function a that depends on x it is equal to a function b that depends on time then a and b must both be constant functions. Now here's the way to think about it. So um, in other words we mean that ax is equal to bt is equal to constant. Here's the way to think about it. So on the left side ax doesn't depend on time. On the right side bt doesn't depend on space. But they're equal to each other so the only way they can be equal if neither of them depend on time or space. Um, let's say, let's compare bt at t equals 0 and t equals 10, say. We know that b0 is equal to ax, but ax doesn't depend on time, so it's the same for time 0 and time 10. This is also equal to b10. So in other words, b0 is equal to b10 b doesn't change between time 0 and time 10. Right, so just because um, if setting these two equal to each other implies that they must both be constant. What this means for us is that from here, using that principle, we have that 1 over k gt times partial gt partial t and 1 fx partial squared fx, partial x squared, must both equal to a constant lambda. Now let's call it minus lambda. Um, the minus is there to make some of our calculations later on a bit easier. It's not really mathematically necessary. But the point is that because we have a function in t set equal to a function in x, they must both be constant. So again, think about it this way. The right hand side doesn't depend on t. The left hand side doesn't depend on x. The left and right are equal to each other, so they both must not depend on t and, and x, so they're constant. So we have it this way. Uh, the, the point is that we have now reduced our problem into two ODEs. So our PDE is now two ODEs. The first ODE is 1 kg dg dt equal minus lambda and our second ODE is 1 over f times d squared f dx squared equals minus lambda. And you know how to solve both of these ODEs already. These are both differential equations that you have learned to solve in your ODE class or your physical math class. And we will, I'll give you a brief recap in the following videos.